So good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to this FENS webinar on Brain Awareness Week grants. Uh, I'm Emma Wynall. We are just waiting for everybody to join us. Um, and while we do that, um, we'll just wait for everybody to log in, join this webinar. Um, I'm in Cardiff in Wales. It's quite rainy outside. You might be able to hear um, the raindrops on my office window, so apologies if you can. Um, we've got a great session for you today, a webinar giving you lots of top tips on Brain Awareness Week grants. We've got contributions from our lovely panellists um, from all over the world, but we will just um, give everybody a couple of moments to join us um, and resolve any technical issues that they might be having, and then we will get going. I can see that the number of attendees has kind of plateaued, um, so we will kick off. So yes, um, good afternoon everybody, thank you for joining us um, on this FENS webinar. Great to see so many of you um, joining us for information about running our Brain Awareness Week um, grants and events in 2023. So this is a webinar organized by the FENS Communications Committee uh, on how to give you some top tips on preparing your uh, applications. And before we begin, um, in addition to saying welcome, or caresso as we say in Wales, um, just some housekeeping in terms of asking questions in the question and answer session at the end, We'd love to keep this really interactive um, and we've got some fab panelists to ask lots of questions to. Um, if you want to do that at the end, it's through the Q&A function rather than the chat and please mention your name and country um, when you ask your questions. No silly questions, all questions are great, so we welcome all of them. But before we do that, we really want to get to know you, to know where you are in the world. So we're going to be using something called Slido for this. Um, this is the website you go to, just go to slido.com and enter this code, or you can scan the QR code um, and you can head over to Slido to let us know where you are. Um, we love to know where you are in the world. As I said, I'm in Wales, uh, in Cardiff actually, in Wales. If you want to pop over to Slido, let us know where you are based um, in the world. Thank you, Victoria, um, for sharing your screen. Okay, so England's coming up um, very high there. Hello, people in England. Um, not competitive at all. Uh, being based over in Wales, we've got people from Spain, Denmark, Germany, Portugal, um, Mexico, Croatia. This is, I love um, presenting FEMS webinars because the, the international representation is wonderful. Um, so welcome to all of you. Great to see places from all over the world represented. Um, in the countries yeah portugal yeah love that uh, portugal very high in the word cloud um fantastic so hello to you all and welcome it's lovely to see all of you um and we very much welcome you all so if we pop back over to my screen um and head on back to the slides that we've got for our session today just a quick overview of the program for you You've already met me. Uh, I'm Emma, I'm your chair for today. And we've got some great case studies coming up from our previous uh, Brain Awareness Week grant awardees. We've got Rui, Laura and Anne to speak to you um, today. So they will be um, going through their case studies. They will be giving you their top tips and then we will finally round up with that interactive Q&A uh, session. So that's what we've got in store for you during this webinar. But just to give you a bit of background, really, before we go into those case studies. So Brain Awareness Week uh, is going to run next year in 2023 from the 13th to the 19th of March. And this is a great week to raise the profile of brain science and neuroscience um, across the world. It's a global campaign that really looks to foster uh, public enthusiasm and support for brain science. And this has been running since 2005. Um, these grants are supported by Dana Foundation um, and they really enhance the outreach and engagement efforts um, of Brain Awareness Week and our partners across Europe. So you can see on the screen there, the grants have been um, active since 2005 and these are some of the places that we have seen the grants awarded to. 
and they help to fund um, more than 30 projects in over 20 countries each year. So the purpose of the grant is to increase awareness of brain science across Europe, and we're really keen to get lots of applications um, from all over the world. So we really do look forward um, to receiving your applications, and this is why we put on this webinar to myth first to give you some top tips on preparing them. So this um, just gives you a bit more background on the grants and Brain Awareness Week. Um, so financial support of up to 1,000 euros is available for activities that occur either in person or online or a mixture um, of the two, they're eligible to receive funding. So lots of people uh, participating in Brain Awareness Week and going back to that overall purpose of increasing the sense of wonder about the brain and supporting these outreach and engagement activities. And we have a deadline of the 16th of November for uh, your applications to come in. So please do plan ahead um, and get those applications in uh, before that deadline. Now, moving on to the best bit, I think, of this webinar, our case studies uh, from our lovely former awardees. So they developed some great projects looking at Brain Awareness uh, Week, and they are going to run through them for you. So let's kick off. Uh, Ruth. If you're happy to, would you like to share your screen and you can tell us more about uh, Falami Neuro? Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Hi. Can you see my screen? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, we can. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, welcome to the session. Thank you, Emma, for the introduction. Uh, so today I'll be talking about Falami Neuro, which is a uh, a Brain Award Awareness Week awardee from uh, 2022, uh, last year. Uh, so this is a project, I'm the founder and manager of Palo Neuro. Uh, this is a communication project in Portugal that aims to promote neuroscience, interest and literacy in all Portuguese speaking people. So I'm a neuroscientist um, and uh, I recently moved uh, to Bordeaux, France uh, to do my postdoc, uh, but my one of my passions is really neuroscience communication. So uh, this project, Follow Neuro, is, uh, is uh, basically grants the, the accessible and up-to-date information to people, regular content in Portuguese, and promotes science democrat democratization. Sorry. Um, yeah, so basically, we do this in two main branches. Uh, we do, uh, we produce a lot of digital content uh, through our social media networks. Um, and uh, it's been a success so far. So we gathered more than 3000 followers and reached a lot of accounts. So this uh, reflects the, the need for, for, for Portuguese people to, to, to know more about neuroscience and brain uh, uh, science in, in general. Um, yeah, and then the other branch is more in-person sessions uh, around uh, or across pro Portugal. So we promote debates, and workshops, interviews uh, with Portuguese neuroscientists and invited guests from the society every th three months, more or less. Uh, and uh, just to give you a brief overview of the last uh, year's project, uh, we were able to reach more than 500 uh, students from both primary and high schools in five different regions in Portugal. And that was quite a success, uh, I would say. Um, yeah, and we are planning ne for next year a lot of activities as well. Um, and just to break the ice on the two main questions, let's say that the, the fence is uh, advocating for uh, how to promote a su successful grant, um, I would say that the top two tips would be to define a clear topic and establish specific goals for your activity and also to design targeted activities for uh, either a specific or a broad audience and shape a, a clear financial plan uh, and uh, how to run an engaging brain awareness week event. I would say the top two tips would be to plan ahead and to think about all the things that the logistics involved in the in this and and also the um, a main aspect which is uh communicating uh, effectively so adapting to different audiences doing different activities and being engaging and bold and passionate about uh talking neuroscience thank you yeah. wonderful thank you so much um i think from your presentation it's clear how much you've done quantity wise but thank you so much we will save questions to the end and the q a function is open if you do have any burning questions and we will get to them later um, but now we are going to pop over to uh, laura for uh, connections explore yourself from bottom to top so go ahead take it away thank you thank you very much and good afternoon everyone it's a pleasure to be here 
So uh, I'll share my screen just uh, for a few slides. Uh, my name is Laura. I work in EUSHARSA, which is an enterprise specialized in developing educational material. And last year, uh, we developed an activity for the Brain Awareness Week um, in collaboration with the Neuroscience Institute in the Univer Universitat Autónoma de Barcelona. This is a research center focused on neuroscience, but it's a very, very small uh, research center. So they wanted to develop an, an activity but they didn't have a lot of people available for running uh, the activity on their research center or going to schools. So the idea what we uh, came up with was to develop an educational ticket, uh, sorry, an educational toolkit for teachers to do the activities at schools during their lecture times to uh, choose a topic that they had to do uh, at their lecture time and do it in a fun way um for the for the kids and um the it's a toolkit that's about four sessions in uh, during lecture time and the last day there is a video call with researchers from the neuroscience institute so they have the opportunity to uh, talk to the kids to interact with them without having to be away from the lab for a lot of times and that's the the way we overcame our challenge in in this in this topic um, the activities, uh, we wanted them to commit two conditions. One uh, was for the activities to be very practical and fun. We didn't want them to be master classes from the teacher to the kids, but the kids to interact, to play, to be fun and practical. And the other topic that we wanted to commit was um, for the activities to be very contextualized to the kids' reality. They are activities for uh, eight, nine-year-old kids. So we wanted them to realize how the nervous system has an important role on their uh, on their daily lives. That's uh, how we conceptualized the um, the activities. It's uh, the activities are um, structured in four sessions. One session each day for a week. So let's four days in a week, and the last day, the fifth one, is the video call with the researchers. Uh, we developed a PDF with the guidelines and all the information available for the um, for the teachers. You will see this is in Catalan because we are in Catalonia. That's how we translated the the title: Connections, Explore Yourself from Bottom to the Top. And basically, what we do in these activities is to talk about the nervous system. The first session is about the senses: how our senses help us understand the environment around us, how they capture the stimuli. The second, the second session is about the muscles and the responses made by the brain to the, stem, the stimuli of the environment. The third one talks about the brain and the emotions, how um, the emotions make us unique uh, and make uh, our brains to do different responses to the same stimuli. And the fourth session is a recap session to gather all the knowledge that had been worked uh, during the three previous sessions. So we asked the students for uh, for them to pick one particular citation that they enjoy, that they know, and to uh, analyze what are the stimuli, what are the responses, and what are the emotions that uh, play a role in that situation, and how all these three concepts are related to the nervous system. And just uh, before finishing, uh, for this condition we wanted to meet, to be contextualized, to be um, the, the activities to be related to the kids. Each session starts with a very short uh, video that's uploaded on YouTube that presents them a situation like, for example, having to eat something that smells very bad or something like this. That, for example, that if some a food smells bad, is telling you that this is something poisonous that can be um, a threat to you. Though that's why um, our emotions have a function in here and how our body makes a response to throw this away. That's why, that's how we uh, make these activities very contextualized. Wonderful, thank you so much um, you. for that. I think one of the really key things about your project is the development of those resources as well, which is brilliant. So thank you. Thank you. Um, and last but not least, finally, we're gonna go over to Anne um, for your project, Yes, what is thank you. Storm, a scientific journey. So yeah, take it away. Thank you very much. Hi everyone. 
Uh, my name is Anna. I'm a communication and engagement officer at the Biotech Research and Innovation Center in Copenhagen, um, a small biomedical institute that does uh, translation on fundamental research in cancer and neuro research. Um, I'm not a scientist myself. I have a communication background, but I've been working in the field of SciComm for the last 15 years. And for the last 10 years, I've been employed at BRIC as coordinator of our outreach program, um, working with the scientists on doing various uh, activities and initiatives to enhance the public understanding of our research. And so for the last few years, we focused um, our institute research mainly on high school students. And that was also the case uh, with the event that we did in 22, which was called Brainstorm, a scientific journey. Could you switch to the next slide, Victoria? Thank you. Um, which was a joint effort of uh, two of our neuro groups. So um, what we wanted to do with this event was that instead of focusing on a specific topic, we wanted to try and tell, you could say, a larger story about the drug discovery process in neuroscience. Um, so how long it is, how complex it is, how many different strategies and areas of expertise are needed, um, and also how basic research serves an important step in this process. So to tell the story uh, in a way that really engaged the students as much as possible, we decided to try and gamify our event uh, um, and use storytelling. Uh, so we made uh, an escape room or an escape room like challenge, you could say, where the participants uh, had to pretend to be scientists who had to solve a series of different tasks to identify the next fictional cure for Parkinson's disease. So during the event, the students had to move around uh, to different areas of our institute in teams and work together to solve four different tasks that were meant to represent different steps in the drug discovery process. Um, very, very oversimplified, of course. Um, so they had to measure their own brain activity using spiker boxes. They examined uh, healthy and diseased brain tissue from mice. They tracked research animal behavior and video clips and they had to um, analyze raw data on potential drug compounds um, to try to identify uh, the best possible drug candidate. Um, and during all these uh, different challenges, they met our researchers who manned the different stations and who acted as, inst as instructors, but also um, tried to really stay in character throughout the whole event. So they, the participants were addressed as scientists and colleagues um, the whole time. And then in the end, um, maybe you could uh, shift to the last slide. Um, after everyone had finished all the challenges, they all made uh, uh, met up with all the instructors. Um, some of the young researchers gave a presentation, uh, talked about their research, tried to put the steps of the experience into perspectives. So saying like what you just did in five minutes would actually take like five years in reality. Uh, and we had a Q&A session and a feedback session. And I think um, all in all, it was uh, a really uh, great success. I think what worked in our case was um, the fact that we had many different um, activities within the activities with ma which made it possible to engage uh, the different types of students, groups of students, and we had a lot of instructors involved. We were 13 scientists on site during the day, um, which really enabled us to have a high level of interaction with the, with the students the whole time. And finally, using the storytelling and gamification elements was a lot of work <laughs> and uh, outside the comfort zone of a lot of us, but, but it really worked wonders, so, yes. Brilliant, thank you so much, Anne, and nicely demonstrating um, a kind of engagement comp professional uh, who's been successful in um, getting one of our Brain Awareness Week grants as well. So if you want to run an event for Brain, Awa Brain Awareness Week, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Um, do mark your calendars, it's the 13th to the 19th of March, and check out the FENS website as well and our social media channels. Um, lots of activities that are going on across the world um, for that week. 
So um, this is a flash webinar, so we've only got about nine minutes left. So I'm keen to open the floor for questions um, from our audience. Um, and also just to mention that you can go to Slido. We'd be really interested to know whether you think you might organize an event for Brain Awareness Week in 2023. Um, but while those questions come in as well, I just wanted to ask our panelists, if you had one tip for our attendees today in terms of applying um, for Brain Awareness Week grants through FENS, what would it be? So I'm going to come to you, Rui, first. Just one top tip. I know it's uh, hard. <laughs> okay, that, that's really hard to answer. But one tip I would say to be really focused on what you're thinking about doing. Um, I would say that planning really regu rigorously, uh, <coughs> sorry, um, your uh, event and have the backup of, of a team, or even if you're on solo mode, let's say, uh, I would say that if you plan ahead quite well, it will be successful. Um, well, and that, that's that's the tip, I would say, <laughs> yeah. Great, thank you. And um, Laura, did you have one? I know it's hard, just one. I, I think the real, the real uh, top tip uh, is very, very useful. and. And be very specific. I mean, choose one topic and a very specific topic. I mean, uh, the neuroscience, it's not a topic. It's called, okay, if you want to talk about uh, how the stimuli response um, math, um, process works, stick to this topic. Try to do it as concrete as possible. And that's going to be the secret to the, to the success. And finally, Anne, did you have just one top tip? Yeah, sorry. Uh, I would say don't be afraid of seeking advice and going to dialogue with someone who represents your target audience. Allow time for seeking advice from if you want to, for instance, we targeted uh, high school children, so we actively sought advice from, from teachers. Yeah. Well, thank you. And Anne, while I've got you, I um, just want to ask a question that's come in around you know, is this just for, for scientists, active scientists, who can apply for these types of grants? And you mentioned, you know, that some of this is a lot of work. There's also a question about pros and cons. So I just wondered if you could speak to that for a moment, please. Well, I would say from my perspective, there are definitely more uh, more pros than, than cons. Maybe the, the biggest con would be that it does take quite a lot of time. Um, but in terms of, of, of pros, it has just been such a great experience. I, I think for most of our scientists, as I also wrote in the slide, they have since become active in other uh, psychom activities. So I think everyone found it very rewarding. Brilliant, thank you. And thank you to those of you um, who were over on Slido um, and gave us responses in there as well. Um, great, Laura, if I could come to you, a uh, question from Amit, hi Amit, um, about audience so audience is so important isn't it in terms of um brain awareness week who are we targeting these activities at so the question is uh, is there or are there any restrictions on audience whether it should be school children or can that audience vary um i, I i'm not aware if the 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 grant has any restrictions i don't think so Correct. but uh, but i think that this is totally a key point as well as i was saying previously that Having a very concrete topic is one of the key points. Having your audience in mind is one of the, the other keys to success for, for your activity to be successful. Because um, I think that it doesn't matter. You can, you can think of any activity uh, for any kind of audience as long as the activity suits the audience. And this is, and you have always them in mind. So actually, I would love to see more uh, dissemination activities for adult audience. I think that we are, um, because educational materials are always focused to schools and children because it's, it's easier and they don't have a choice rather than just being at school. But I would love that in the next years, uh, more and more dissemination activities for adult audience uh, are started because it would be, it would be great. Great, thank you. Yeah, I think it's about justifying the, the audience, right? And, and yeah. really taking them into account. Rui, did you have any other comments on that? Audience? Yeah, I would, I would like to add that that's a really key aspect of communicating neuroscience, really 
be uh, to be engaged with different audiences, especially if you're talking about kids or adults. That's one of my uh, one of our project's main, uh, let's say, struggles. You need to adapt quite well the the, the language and the well the level, of course, of the of, uh, of your, what you're talking about. So th that that seems to be uh, yeah the case for adults specifically. I, I would say that it's quite it's quite difficult to to kind of uh, see what your audience knows on what your audience doesn't know. So, uh, and that's why we as communicator, the communicators are struggle quite a, a lot with uh, engaging with the uh, adults mostly. And that's why we don't see mo many projects on, on that end. Um, but yeah, as Laura said, I would like to also to, to bring the, the adult public more to the to these uh, brain awareness week uh, grants um for sure and i'm sure fans uh, also would like that yeah great thank you and um, just picking up on another question here so is there a main topic of brain awareness week in 2023 so Anne, do you want to comment on that so brain awareness week is really just about um raising the profile of brain science and brain research everywhere so there's not really a specific topic at all did you want to add anything else? I, I I don't think I have anything to add because no, to my knowledge, there is no specific. No, no topic. specific topic. Um, it's really about any topic that creatively kind of engages audience um, in neuroscience. And please do be creative. We love creative proposals. Um, you've seen some fantastic examples there. Um, Yes. Uh, can I add something? Yeah, so, go for it. Uh, sometimes the country itself or the, the society, the neuroscience uh, uh, society of the country uh, actually uh, brings out a topic or suggests a topic for you to talk about. So, yeah. Great. Thank you. I know we've only got a couple of minutes left, but I'm just going to pick up on um, questions about money. So there's a couple of questions in there around funding. Did any of you receive extra funds to run your projects or was it just the um, funds, Brain Awareness Week money that you um, had? Uh, Laura, let's go to you. In our case, it was only the funds uh, grant. Yeah, we didn't receive uh, any more grants. Anne, how about you? No, we didn't receive any other uh, external funding, but we did use, we have, uh, an allocated uh, outreach budget, which we uh, use for this event. Uh, yeah, we we established a partnership with the Portuguese Society for Neuroscience, and they gave they gave us extra money. Uh, so uh, that would that was really helpful. Yeah. And actually, that justification of the the finance with all of these applications is so so important, isn't it? Um, we've got a minute left, so I'm just going to share my screen. I know we can stay a bit longer, but I'm conscious this was only advertised as half an hour. Um, so finally, we just want to say a huge thank you um, to our speakers who came. Um, so Lara and Rui, um, our organisers, our lovely FENS technical team uh, who are hiding in the background. Um, just a mention to our social media channels as well and the FENS uh, news alert and also a reminder of the application deadline because I know it was a question um, for us. It's the 16th of November. So please do get your applications in uh, nice and early. Um, we do receive lots of applications and we hope that this has given you some additional information uh, how to write those applications. We would love to see um, all your applications and we would love for you to take part uh, in Brain Awareness Week. So mark your calendars, uh, March 2023. So we really hope you found this felt helpful. Um, and thank you to everybody who's involved. And we will see you all soon. So goodbye for now, everyone. <laughs>